we're going to be expanding binomials. Now we've often done this with things like x plus y or x plus 2 squared, but we're going to be going into higher powers. So we're going to be doing things like a plus b to the exponent 5. Ultimately, we're going to be looking for a pattern that emerges in the coefficients as we go into higher and higher powers of our power here. And so a plus b to the exponent 0 is just 1. Now you're going to be using Wolfram Alpha for this. And ordinarily, I would like you to do this by hand, but uh, at the same time, it gets really, really tedious after a while. Now you'll see in the table you have a plus b to the exponent 0, and it's 1, so that's already filled in for you. a plus b to the exponent 1 is really no surprise at all. It's a plus b. Now you've seen this one before. a plus b squared, of course that's 1a squared, plus, we can do this one without looking, 2ab plus 1b squared. Now we're going to be getting into the higher powers that we haven't done very often. So a plus b cubed. Well, I can hardly wait to see how that turns. All right, Wolfram Alpha, expand a plus b cubed. What is it when I get done expanding it? Expand a plus b cubed. And Wolfram Alpha has dutifully expanded this. So my coefficients are 1, 3, 3, and 1. Now behind the scenes, Wolfram Alpha has done all the expanding and gathering. You'll see where this 3a squared b comes from, and it's always good to know and understand your roots. So this is a times a times b. You'll see that in the expansion, if you were doing this by hand, like they did in the old days, here's 1a times a times b, and here are two more here, and when Wolfram Alpha gathers them up, you end up with three. You're not doing it by hand. You're welcome. Okay, and so basically what you're going to be doing is you're going to be filling in this table, and you'll notice that these numbers basically form a triangle. Now it's a very famous triangle named Pascal's Triangle. It lets us make predictions about what the coefficients of binomial expansions are, and it goes well beyond that in higher mathematics. So believe it or not, this stuff gets very useful application when we get dealing with things like probabilities. So this is the start. This is Pascal's triangle. Let's fill this in and start to look for patterns in the triangle itself.